Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash capital L, capital P, capital N. Over 160,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash capital L, capital P, capital N. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Blind Pundit podcast. Uh, It's been a while since our last uh, episode, and that's my fault more than anybody else's. Uh, I am your uh, humble co-host, Shane Phillip, and uh, on line with us, we have the founder of Linson Productions and uh, the main guy behind the glass, the producer, Mr. Aaron Linson. How you guys doing? All right, Aaron. So we got there's lots going on uh, from a political perspective. We could pluck anything out of the air and probably spend three hours discussing it because every single day there's something new. Right. But l- let's talk about something that's uh, near and dear to your heart coming from the great bluegrass state of Kentucky. Let's talk a little bit about your governor and the push around charter schools and mm-hmm. private schools. And, and it, could, it could be a timely topic with all the teachers going on strike around the country, yeah. which is, sounds, sounds, it seems to me a bit coordinated. But why don't, why don't you bring up to bring us up to speed on what your governor tried to do and what's going on with charter schools and, and your uh, initial thoughts around it? Yeah. So there was a lashback among the uh, teachers here, at least in Kentucky, the ones that I know of. Um, somebody in my family um, is the VI director of Kentucky, of the whole state of Kentucky. Um, so I do know a little bit more about this than um, a lot of people might. Uh, but anyways, what happened was Matt Bevan um, basically put a law inside or tried to put it all inside of a sewage bill. We can even go and talk about how that whole thing is a complete waste of time. And, and um, they try to Beth, cover it up, but Matt Matt Bevan being your governor, being the governor, the, yeah, being the yeah, governor for those who, of the, for the great state of Kentucky, state of Kentucky yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he tried to put that underneath a sewage bill, um, and basically it said that he would be that that there, there still would be some public schools, but from going uh, whatever date it was, um, or the there would be charter schools. Now, what had all the teachers up in arms was not just the charter schools because they believe that uh, they don't provide a lot of education to all students due to people who have the money running them so they can decide who goes comes in and who doesn't. Um, the bill also said that they would take uh, sick leave away from future teachers. Future teachers yes. or first year teachers? Future teachers. That they wouldn't get oh. any of that. They went so the so if a teacher calls in sick, uh, no no sick day. Correct. Oh, that's okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, you know, Aaron, you you've kind of you know uh, you, uh, both you and I have experiences mm-hmm. in the private school sector, uh, pu- public school sector. I mean, what's your what's your take on uh, you know public school versus charter school versus private school? So private schools are interesting because I've never really, um, never really been at one, but I do. Uh, there are people in my family. Uh, who in my wife's family who have and are still and are still, and they seem interesting. They seem to bring a lot more to the table than public schools, um, as far as you know, learning. Like, uh, there's a family friend of ours back when I was in high school, and he was learning Latin, which was pretty interesting. But he was also getting a biblical education on top of that too, um, which I thought was really neat. But uh, when it comes to the way they work with kid, different kids, like with, with uh, you know disabilities or cognitive or whatever, I'm not really sure that they have the means to do so. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, as it is. 
I, uh, I, 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 the, the little uh, gimmick that your governor tried to pull off by uh, putting in an addendum at the back end of a sewage bill yeah. to try to try to get that passed. Uh, I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. I, I, I do like your governor, uh, Mr. Bevan. Uh, he is a, you know, my my theory is, as you and I were just talking about earlier, mm-hmm. my theory is when it comes to politics, in my in my humble opinion, about 80 percent of all Democrats are corrupt, and about 30 percent of all Republicans are corrupt. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of trying to identify which one isn't and which one is not and and if someone has been uh in a political office uh state or federal in my opinion if that person has been there 10 years or longer there's a there's an 80 percent chance that they are corrupted in some way compromised blackmailed you can't you know you just cannot be in those positions for that length of time without the opportunity for bribe and graft coming across your desk and you not uh, um, taking part of that in one way or another uh, it's, it's 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 human nature uh, you can only refuse temptation for so long when you're subjected to it in my humble opinion that's just that that's my take on it right and so <clears throat> for for that reason i'm not a big fan of the establishment on on either side i I think one of the biggest problems with D.C. or uh, state governments uh, across the country is people have been uh, in politics for too long. They have turned politicians, uh, politics into a profession, right. and that was never that was never the intention of the founding fathers. You were supposed to work on your farm, work as a blacksmith, work as a doctor, work as a preacher, work as a pastor, and then go serve your country for three or four years, and then go back to your constituents and never lose touch. Uh, with your local people, and that was that was the uh, intention uh, of the Constitution and the uh, and, and the federalism and taking uh, what they had created at a national level to each and every state. Uh, so the governor is an equivalent to the president. The, the state senate, the state house of representatives, are uh, supposed to be mirror copies of what happens in D.C. That that was the intention, but obviously, as we all know, we live in a world now where politics is a profession and people go there. Worth less than a couple hundred thousand dollars, and mm-hmm. ten years later, they're multimillionaires and on a salary of about 150 grand a year. So, uh, I can get off on a tangent on that. I, uh, I. I believe that, uh, in my humble opinion, I believe that our education system is broken um, at, at the uh, 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 K through 12 and also uh, college level. I was reading an article the other day, and it said something like 60 to 65 percent of all college graduates uh, uh, that are graduating uh, today uh, cannot do basic algebra. Cannot. Uh, don't lack basic critical thinking skills, which means that they're just bringing these kids in and they're pushing them out and they're not really testing them. Uh, they're not really uh, subjecting them to rigor as other countries, uh, uh, such as uh, India, China, Japan, uh, Germany. And that's the reason why we continue to fall behind, because we're not pushing our kids. Right. Uh, and, I, and I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, going back to my original comment about bribery and graft. When money is when money is just rolling in, you tend to back off and 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 not. Uh, uh, put forth the same amount of effort because you're going to get paid the same amount this month, next month, next year, and the year after that versus actually being tested, right? So my, my, in my humble opinion, the solution to this uh, for me uh, as a parent, a father, taxpayer – who has paid thousands and thousands of dollars into the system over the years in property taxes, uh, raising my two boys. Uh, I think um, I think there's a place for uh, charter schools. I think there's a place for private schools. And I think there's a place for public schools. And I think the decision as to one of those three should be left in the hands of the parent. So, Aaron, if you're if you're shelling out five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a year in property taxes, and that goes into a big pool and it's divided up and it goes into and then you're paying uh, school taxes and, and 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 you live in a particular zip code and, and it's zoned a certain way where you don't have any choice. you got to send your kid to this particular elementary school, this particular middle school, this particular high school. Well, you know, and but you're the one writing the checks in the form of taxes. Uh, uh, in every other aspect of your life, when you go down to Walmart or you go down to the grocery store or you decide what doctor to go see or what uh, pair of jeans to buy, you as a consumer, uh, you have a choice as to how those dollars are spent. Why cannot why cannot that be the same when it comes to your taxes? So my my solution and I live in the great state of Texas. And one of the things that our attorney general uh, and our governor is trying to push are vouchers. In other words, 
you, Mr. Parent, Mr. Aaron Linson, father of a child, you'll get a voucher from the state equivalent to the taxes that you poured in, whether it's five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars a year, whatever. And then you decide where to send your kid. If there's a private school down the street, if there's a private school across town that's biblical or it's Christian based, Islamic based, uh, uh, based on the, a Sikh religion, based on no religion. It's some type of academic academy, but you want to send your kids there. Uh, in in the in in the old world, you would have no choice. You have to send your kid to the school that you're zoned to, and only if you have extra money can you send your kid to private education. Now, you would get this voucher, and you can spend it at your local public school. You can spend it at a charter school that you may find, and you can spend it at a, pri a private school. And in my opinion, that would create competition amongst those schools and those entities for your voucher dollars. Now, you can't go out and buy a car with it. You can only spend it on education. And so that I think, I think that's the solution. That would make all the public schools compete with the private schools. The private schools compete with the public schools. Right. The, and both of them compete with the charter schools. And you would have uh, uh, the best. Uh, it's no different than going down to the uh, 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 cellular store and deciding what type of phone to buy, whether it's a Samsung, LG, Apple, uh, the latest and greatest Google phone or, right. or something else, right. you know? Uh, we have choices in this country. One of, one of the wonder, most wonderful things about this country is that we have choice. Yes. I can choose to be a good person. I can choose to be a jerk, and there are consequences. I can choose to buy a Hyundai. I can choose to buy a Honda. I go, or I can buy a Ford. Uh, uh, but wh why? Why would you take away that choice from the parent as to where he or she wants to send their child? And think about it. If you if you are a, if you are a, a poor person living in a rough part of town and you whether because of the way things are zoned and way money's allocated right. you are you have no choice but to send your kid to this dilap dilapidated school right. and this corrupt school district run by a bunch of corrupt superintendents right. that have that have never cared about the kids and as i'm going to talk about getting off on a tangent you got these school districts where kids have to share books and read right. together, but the superintendent is knocking down a salary of five hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. And and the people that sit on the board are making one hundred and fifty to two hundred. Explain that to me. What? Wh why is that? I mean, when the money should be going towards the kids. Right. You know, and making the, the, the school better. Making the school better. Why do you need a school district? And and the, this is another thing that really it, it gets under my skin. I live in a county. Which may may have I don't know twelve or thirteen different zip codes. Within those twelve and thirteen zip, different zip codes, there's probably twelve or thirteen different school districts, with a superintendent running each and every one of them. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Why can't you have uh, a, a have a school district for an entire county? Right. You may have two hundred schools, you may have three hundred, whatever, but you. Cut out the fat. You have one superintendent that runs the county, mm -hmm. runs a school district in that county, and a board of directors that help manage and oversee the you know thousands of you know, five thousand, six thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand students and the and the teachers that 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 operate it. You have CEOs of companies that that have over one hundred and fifty thousand employees. Yeah. So if you have a CEO that can manage and run an organization of one hundred and fifty thousand employees, why can't a superintendent do the same? Thing with the school district, mm -hmm. but in, but instead we have 14 different school districts, an average of 15 to 20 schools per district, and a superintendent that's knocking down anywhere from 300,000 to a half a million dollars a year, multiplied by 13. Talk about a waste of money, right? Property taxes. So, I believe the 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 solution is handing those vouchers to the parent and let the parent walk around and hold that as a as a as a as a sledgehammer. And say, listen, if you want my money, you will have the best schools. You will have the best equipment. You will have the most accessible whatever because I've got a child with disabilities. Right. And if you don't have it, I'll take my $10,000 voucher and I'll just go down the street and hand it to a school that's got all those things. Exactly. I'll t I'll take my kid that needs a special uh, that needs extra attention. He may be autistic, maybe has uh, suffers from Down syndrome, maybe has some type of disability, and I'm not going to throw him into a class with 40 kids competing for the attention of one teacher. I'm gonna I'm gonna exactly. put him in my car and I'm gonna drive him across town and I'm gonna send him to St. Bernard's. 
right. where he's got the attention from one teacher one and he's just way, one and he's one of 12 kids in a class, right. one of 13 kids with in a class. With an assistant. With an assistant. Yes. That's what needs to happen, Aaron. Yeah. And guess what else happens? Now, if you have these school districts competing with one another, they're going to be competing with one another for the best teachers also. Exactly. Get, guess what happens to the teacher salaries? The uh, really, really good teachers start making more and more money. Right. The really, really sucky ones get pushed out and kicked out. Yeah. Just like in just like just like in the in a true free market capitalistic society. If you're a good salesperson, you're gonna rise. If you're a good lawyer, you're gonna get more clients. If you're a lousy lawyer, you're gonna lose cases, you're not gonna land deals, and you're gonna be unemployed. Right. Teachers should be treated the same freaking way. Yeah. Measured on the success and failure of the product you produce, which are the kids that you are responsible for. I totally agree. So I think that's that's what needs to happen. Uh, the state of Louisiana has already passed it into law, and uh, they've seen tremendous uh, impact. And uh, Texas is uh, close. I, I, I want to believe in the next legislative legislative session we will pull it off. And I, and obviously the biggest resistance that we have is from the local teachers unions because they see charter schools and private schools as a threat. Right. They've had a monopoly for so long. These kids. You know, uh, they they get paid X number of dollars right. for uh, for every butt sitting in a seat for X number of days throughout the year, and those those dollars roll in from the federal government. And I think yeah. I think the National Education Association and the National whatever Education uh, Department up in D.C. I think I think that needs to be done away with. You need to eliminate that division, push it back to the states. All that money you're wasting up in D.C., give it to the states in the form of grants and let them spend it uh, uh, by pushing those dollars to the parents. So now the parents can decide, is that school the right school for me? Does it have the right kind of security? Does it have armed guards? All the stuff that's happened with the violence and the school shootings. All of that disappears overnight because if I'm driving along and I'm a parent and I got my two precious kids in the backseat and I'm looking at a facility that's got guards and, and, and dogs and, and good teachers, hey, that's where I'm sending my kid. I can drop my kid off and go to work and know that, that you know, I'll have peace of mind that my children are treated as, as, as securely as my money is at my bank. Exactly. That I believe that, in my humble opinion, that's the answer. That's what needs to happen. And, I, and, and, and the teachers' unions, the ones that have been around for a long time, they're fighting it because they see it as a threat to something that they've had control over for years and years and years. And it's not the teachers. That's another thing that pisses me off. Talk about waste. So you're, you're a poor teacher. You've just graduated. You're, you're, you've got student loans that you're trying to pay off. You're working in a local school district, right. probably barely scratching thirty-five, thirty-six thousand dollars a year, and every two weeks when you get your check, uh, a couple hundred dollars gets uh, taken out of your check and is sent to the union, your local uh, teachers' union, uh, without your consent because it's forced. Right. Those dollars roll into a big bucket, and and there's a there's a, uh, a union leader and a board of directors and right. a union head that are salary paid employees that run the union. And right. they're making and they're two, making three, more they're making more than the teachers are. They're making two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, Aaron. Yeah. It's it pisses me yeah. off. I mean, imagine this, you know, I mean, you went to college and I went to college, right? Let's say the same thing happened with the alumni association, because I just I just got something say hey, yeah, renew, they, renew they, your, were they, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah renew they your alumni you. association. That's they, right. they would force you to do it. I yeah. had that choice not to do it and I didn't take that's it because right. I don't do anything with them. That's uh, so right. I didn't see the the, the benefit in it, but it's like, well, imagine if that was just the norm for every alumni association, regardless if you did anything with them or not. That's right. You were forced because you right. are a member of an organization. You are forced to pay dues. Does that sound like America or does that sound like freaking Nazi Germany? Right. I mean, where you're forced to do something beyond, you know, I mean, I, well, the, the, it could all change overnight because the uh, Supreme Court is uh, uh, reviewing a case right now brought by a teacher in California that said, listen, I don't I, – once those dollars are taken out of my check by force and it's spent on political advocacy, it's right. spent in ways that I don't agree with, you know, I have no control. Right. Over how what what the what the union will turn those millions of dollars and fund it towards candidates that continue to support the monopoly of the union. Right. That that that's like uh, <clears throat> that's like uh, you know uh, back in the old days uh, when uh, the big the when Carnegie and and Kellogg and 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 
and the uh, and the Rockefellers basically controlled industries and controlled um, uh, 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 vast stretches of people that would pour money into a pot, and then those. Uh, 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 oligarchs would would take those dollars and pour it into the pockets of politicians that would continue to support their agenda. That, uh, that's that's not that's not the America that I know. So right. if Scott is if Scott is if the Supreme Court rules in her favor, this the forced uh, deduction of of uh, dues out of people's paychecks, not just for teachers, but uh, UAW teamsters, auto workers. Uh, the list goes on and on. All the forced deductions that come out of your paycheck, whether you're a union man or not, all of that will uh, all of that will go away. And I have a feeling it's going to be a six-three decision in favor of the individual. Uh, and I, and I, and I think that'll 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 put a crimp on a lot of that. But but there's so much fraud and waste and abuse of our tax dollars. I want that back. So I, getting back to the original topic, I really think whether it's a, whether you have a child with a disability a need or a child that does not, but you want to be able to, as a parent, you, want, you should be able to decide. Those poor inner city kids that are struggling, trying to break out of the cycle of, of, uh, the, that they've been trapped in where, where their, where their mom or dad may not have finished high school and never got off to college. Their grandparents may or may not have ever finished high school and gone off to college. Mm-hmm. You put you you walk into that family's house and you hand them a check for ten thousand dollars and they've got four kids and so that's forty thousand yeah. dollars that they can use to send their children to the best schools that they can they can that drive they can to choose. hop on a that can they can hop on a bus to or walk to right. or f- fly to whatever I mean in today's day in in today's day and time with the metro system and and the, and the bus systems that exist right now you may live in the heart of the inner city and in, in in the heart of the barrio. But if there is a school uh, in in suburban uh, uh, um, Louisville that is, you know, a high performing school, but you, hey, you you were never able to send your kids to that school before because you don't live in that zip code, so you can't send send your kid there. The word they've got the latest and greatest iPads and the latest greatest this and the latest greatest that. Right. But if I come to you as a lawmaker and I hand you ten thousand dollars in taxpayer money. And say, listen, you want to send your kid to that school out in uh, out in the suburbs of Louisville, and you you have a way of getting them there. Send them. Mm-hmm. Or and here's another can. idea: with the schools that are out of <clears throat> that possibly could be out of reach, that they just want to have their kids at home, make sure that they're having a, a good education. Why not have on online courses that that child could take, and the parent could help customize the courses to them oh aaron you are on to something man i i i believe that the internet and the flattening of uh uh uh, technology uh the flattening of the network scares the crap out of teachers and schools and colleges because you you make a very valid point if you have access to a computer uh and 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 a camera uh and whatever you can you can sit at your chair Dial in and listen to a lecture exactly. from a teacher or a professor, just like if you were actually in that classroom. Exactly. And now with all the tools that are available, whether it's Zoom or GoToMeeting or whatever, you can right. collaborate with people online. You can collaborate with people halfway around the world. Exactly. B- businesses use it every every single day. Developers are working with each other, spread across the entire globe, working on a software release. If they can work together and produce a product for Microsoft, why why cannot students do the right. same thing? Right. And there are t- there are times that you need to be hand hands on i i agree oh, i definitely agree yeah but 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 you can arrange that you know exactly. all these kids all these kids studying from home could and their their parents could right. meet at the at the museum can meet at the history of natural sciences right. can meet at a particular lab and conduct experiments right. you are absolutely on to something i really believe that that is the future where where uh, where uh, a child or a student can log in and take their courses online uh, uh, uh many universities are offering uh, courses online right. uh, arizona state has a has a uh, uh, a degree in mis a bachelor's degree that is kind of that is 100 percent online mm-hmm. you, you never even need to visit the campus you take you listen to the lectures you you order your books you study you take your exams online you take your finals on down online you write your senior thesis right. you submit it to the professor in pdf form for him or her to review and then you get your degree you you are absolutely right. spot on. So you could go to that family, 
that 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 poor family that the the family trapped in a cycle where if one kid in that generation breaks away it helps the yeah. entire clan or, or or tribe if you will yeah. you could go to that family and say listen here's ten thousand dollars buy the latest and greatest technology with it as long as you're using it for education your child can go to the best university your child can go to harvard without leaving his bedroom exactly well and what about also custom like say you know if you wanted to be a jack of all trades you wanted to you know know a little bit of you know i don't know music coding Mm -hmm. you know you wanted to do a lot of stuff online what about like you people or students who knew what they wanted to do could customize what they wanted their degree Ab- to have. A- absolutely. 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 I, re- I, re- I, I believe that, that we're, we're heading in that direction and it's, I believe it's accelerating and I think it scares the heck out of these universities with big buildings and campuses and, and faculty that they have to pay for. They want the kids on campus. And there is an, I'm not knocking it. There is an experience there. There is. Both, yeah. um, both of my kids, uh, you know, uh, went to a traditional college and traditional schools. There, there's value there, but what if, what if you don't want that? Right. What if what if you you know live in freaking Anchorage, Alaska, and you would love to go to MIT or Harvard uh, and, and get a degree from there, but you don't have the money or the resources to live on campus, and n- n- nor do you want to travel halfway across the country to do it? Right. Well, not only that, if you're a blind student who basically said, "Look, this campus is too big for me. I don't understand it." No That's matter right. How many times I walked. Right. The campus to try to find classes, uh, U of L, uh, they can do a lot of stuff. On, they can take their courses online and get their degree online. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And you can have teachers and faculty members uh, tailor an entire syllabus based upon the student and the type exactly. of students. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right, Aaron. I, 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 I uh, you know, I think it was another article that I read that only about 20 to 30 percent of the kids that graduate with a particular degree actually use the degree in the field. Right. Uh, after they finish. So, right. I mean, so that means 70 that means anywhere from 80 to 70 percent of the money that you spend sending your kids to school is a complete waste because they exactly. graduate and they wind up doing something completely different. Exactly. So may as well spend a little bit of time for, figure out what their interests are, what their skill sets are. Do you know? Do do a little bit of testing like in the old days, right. and uh, maybe you're cut out for vocational school. Maybe you're right. not cut out for college. Maybe you're cut out to be a, a HVAC technician. Maybe you're cut out mm-hmm. to be a, a mechanic. Maybe you're cut out to be an electrician and go through an apprenticeship program, become uh-huh. a journeyman. Uh-huh. Maybe you're cut out to be a welder, not necessarily a coder. Uh, you know, maybe you're, with those. maybe maybe you're cut out to actually assemble. Computers computers rather right. than code computers oh, right because you need right. both exactly and 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 we're we're missing out on that and that's one of the reasons that we we have a big gap as a nation in those technical skills and that's why companies they claim uh i gotta dig into it see how much of it is uh, truth and uh, fiction but they claim they need to import coders they need to import welders they need to import yeah, well, that's what they say because that's because a skill set skill set within the American base right. does not exist. And there may be some some truth to that because we're not manufacturing stuff like we used to. Those factories, especially around clo- near, near where you live, I mean the right. Ohio, Ohio Valley, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all those factories sit idle. Youngstown, you know, right. uh, the, the name of those uh, uh, Akron, Ohio, Toledo, mm-hmm. uh, Flint. Uh, Dearborn. I mean, the name of the names, you know, Muscatine, <laughs> Iowa. The names go on and on and on and on. Where there yeah. used to be, used to be factories that are that are idle now because uh, our high schools are not producing the kids that can graduate from high school and go right into an apprenticeship program right. and go right into the factory and start screwing shit together. Right. So. So anyway, I believe it's vouchers and and choice. And I think if you give parents the choice. Nine times out of ten, they'll make the right decision for their kids. That's just my humble opinion. Right. And if so, they don't, they they can go. The school systems can go and say, "Look, you need to rethink." Yeah. Well, if they don't, it's on them, right? Well, I mean, sure. I think I, I, yeah. I think I, I think you got to push these responsibilities on these parents. You can't mm-hmm. let the government step in and be the parent for the child. True. You know, for force these parents to sit back and make choices about what's best for their children 
And the, and the child can make that decision too. The child can say, listen, you know, my friends are going to uh, XYZ Academy. I want to go. And and now with now with the voucher now with the voucher they have the they have the ability to do that, right? So and if they find it's not a, be- a better fit, they can say, "Look, I want to go to this one." That's right. That's right. It's all about competition. I think I think competition competition in in as many aspects of life and business and politics as possible is a good thing. I think monopolies of any kind is a bad thing. Right. You know, whether it's a, whether it's a monopoly of a religion, a belief system, a political party or a school district, monopolies are always inherently bad. But don't you think we have to build monopolies just because so we can badmouth them and say there's problems with them? And, you know, well, I well, well, part of that. But I think it's also the human nature. Uh, uh, people want power. Uh, people want yeah. control. Uh, there's, there's a, you know, uh, we, we'll get into another argument about uh, religion. But you know, to me, there's a difference between being a Christian and being uh, a Baptist or being a Catholic or being a Presbyterian. Uh, you know, there's a difference between being a Christian and, and following a um, uh, a uh, codified religion. Right. And, and, in, and in my opinion, though, that structure of the Pope and the pastor and the priest and the bishop, I think that was all built years ago for power. Right. Uh, that the, the, you, that was not what Jesus wanted, you know, in my humble opinion as a Christian. He wanted fellowship, and uh, certainly there should be somebody within the group to lead in prayer and to dive into the Bible and the Word. But that's really about it. That's where it ends. There should be no hierarchy beyond that. It should be you, right. your, your church leader, and God, and that's it. Right. No bishops, no deacons, no, you know, conclave where they get together and meet and decide what's the positions of the Baptist this year. What's the Catholic, you know, the Vatican, the millions of dollars that pour into that place. The, yeah. That that's, That is not the way it should be. Yeah, that, that was never the intention. Mm-hmm. Never the intention. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think it's just the inherent nature of man. We want power. We want to control. We want to have power over another human being. And whether it's religion or a school district or politics, or, or we just we want power. And the more, the better. Right. I think that's where, I, I think that's where it all stems from. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's my that's my opinion. Uh, I think what your governor tried to do was a little uh, sneaky, but I think yeah. would be he would he would be much better off saying, "Listen, I want to push a voucher program, and whether it's a charter school or a private school or a public <laughs> school, I want to mm-hmm. I want to put the power of choice back in the hands of parents." And his his uh, measures would get passed because every parent would be calling the state house saying, "Hey, I agree with the governor on this." Right. That's what he needs to do. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, well, I don't see anything else. Well, as far as time wise, we are like twenty minutes below where we usually sit. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's the. Uh, anyway, uh, the, those are our thoughts on uh, schools and freedom of choice. Uh, uh, you know, you you guys are who listen are more than willing to comment. Yeah. On our musings, uh, write to us and reach reach out to us through Twitter or yep. or whatever, and uh, you know we'll we'll continue the conversation offline. Yeah, definitely, <coughs> definitely. And as always, you can uh, reach us uh, the phone number to if you want to call in and leave us a voicemail that we will use on the next BP Squared or uh, the LP in any of our. Other shows that we do on the OP Podcast Network is 502-536-9131. You can also feel free to write us at Linson Productions LLC at gmail.com. Or you can follow us on Facebook at our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash, slash Linson Productions LLC. Or follow us on Twitter at Linson underscore pro LLC and all that information is on the contact page over on insproductions.com. 
All right, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, you can follow me directly at uh, uh, Shane P one S H A N E, the letter P, uh, the number one, as in the numerical one at Shane P one, and uh, you know uh, check out our website at Listen Productions. Aaron and I do much more than just the political podcast. Aaron exactly. does a lot of product reviews. Yep. So if you're thinking about making a decision on a particular electronic product or an accessibility tool or just uh, uh, you know a lot of Aaron's musings in general, I uh-huh. highly recommend that you guys go check it out and uh, and uh, read his blogs, uh, uh, listen to his podcast, and uh, make your decisions uh, after that. And if you do decide to follow Shane on Twitter, you will need to put him in list and call that list people he tweet too much because <laughs> he will fill up your timeline. Which Sorry is, about that. Which is totally fine for him to do. He has the right to do it. But you also have the right to put him in a list and say, you're going to go in your little box over here and I'll look at you. When I can. When I can. <laughs> when I get through all the news and everything I'm yeah. interested in, I'll come over to you. Yeah. Um, Be warned, I I, uh, I am a political pundit and so I tweet uh, often. And I'm a technology pundit and I tweet often as in at the dismay of a lot of people in my family. Oh, that's all you ever do on Twitter and all you ever put on Facebook. Well... That's the way it is, but oh, we have to pursue our passion. Yep, exactly. Yep. So, guys, we will see you in the next BP Squared podcast. We are hoping hoping to do this um, every single week. So, if there's a topic that you guys want us to cover, let us know by getting in contact with us. Again, you can go to lensproductions dot com. All of our information is there, and we'll see you guys on the other side.